Now, the previous is what he calls a, a competence model, borrowing terminology from Chomsky. So it allows the, the child capacity, but doesn't tell you how the child does that. It's not, not a processing model. But Leslie also gives a processing model of the operations involved in pretense, involving the computation of that pretense relations. So this processing model has three components. The first two are old friends, perceptual systems and central cognitive systems. But Leslie's contribution is his postulation of a decoupling mechanism, which includes a, an expression raiser, a manipulator, and an interpreter, as we'll see. So the model begins by the perceptual processes inputting to the central cognitive system, which thereby holds primary representations. The expression razor's job is to copy primary representations from the central systems and to decouple them by tagging them and so quarantining them. That is, removes them from their normal input-output relations and their normal computations. The manipulator integrates the decoupled expression with information from central systems, with which it forms the pretend representation by supplying the agent and the pretend relation if pretense is what is at issue. The interpreter further integrates the output from the manipulator with the central cognitive system and correlates it with anchors, what they call anchors in reality, which might be what the child is looking at, the image of the banana that she has, or her stored knowledge, encyclopedic knowledge, of uh, what telephones are and what they do. So these are primary representations in perception and in memory. The interpreter also updates the central system and the central system uses the output of the whole decoupler in order to generate action. So in an example here, it may be the, the child pretends, takes a, a banana, pretends that it's a phone. Uh, the input would be, say, the perception of a banana. And then in a primary representation on the central system that, well, this banana, such and such. Then this is copied and, and decoupled by the expression razor. And... It is operated on by a manipulator that forms the idea I, I am the agent of the pretense, pretend, which is the, the operation at issue, and then this banana is a telephone. And then you have that the decoupled representation of this banana is then associated with the properties that usually belong to the primary representation of a telephone. And then this banana, in order to do that, of course, is anchored by the interpreter into the perceptual anchor, which is that you are grabbing and seeing the banana, and also this memory anchor, which are the properties that phones actually have and which are pretending that your banana has. And then the interpreter also goes back into the central system, and the central system then outputs the action, which is the child places banana near the ear and says, hello, who is it, pretending that the banana is a telephone. But it could also happen in other cases in which uh, the child is understanding other people's pretenses. In this case, the perceptual processes deliver grandma grabbing a banana, right? and so you have uh, this banana. But the difference is, is that, well, you have the expression razor that also quarantines this banana, it decouples it, but the manipulator, instead of inserting self to the left of pretend, it inserts grammar, and then it's interpreted, and then the output is that child plays along with grammar, I don't know, rolls eyes, depending on how old the kid is. Notice that these numbers are the order in which the operations take. And indeed, this same thing can be used to understand other people's attitudes towards the world, other people's minds, the same decoupling mechanisms. In the case in which you see Al looking at the orca and says, Al is a fish, so how you understand that? Well, you have in your central system, you have representations of Al, you have representations of what is typically true of a fish, and you have representation of an orca and of that orca. And so in order to report that Al sees a fish and to understand that, you raise the expression a fish and decouple it from its normal connotations, and then your manipulator forms the expression, the agent is Al, and instead of pretend, he uses the, uh, the predicate things with it's a fish, and then it's fed to the interpreter, and then it's, again, to the central system. And so, in short, Leslie proposes that for the child to perform the non-literal mental representations that are typical of pretend play, the child must be able to appreciate at the same time two views of reality that are contradictory. Like, this is a banana, and it's also, this is a telephone. But this simultaneous appreciation is 
is dependent again of the meta representational system. And this meta representational system functions by decoupling the pretend representations from the representations of the real world. So that the child can internally represent the environment in, in a literal way without being corrupted by the or contaminated by the other representations of the fantasy world so they don't collapse into each other. And so, again, as we saw, the same decoupling mechanism works for both pretend play and by mental state attributions. The difference is in the operators applied to the decoupled representations, for instance, belief or things, and in the case of Al and uh, false orca, or pretend, as in my case when I'm playing with a banana and thinking that it's a telephone, or grandma is doing the, the, the pretense. According to uh, Leslie and other theorists, this decoupling mechanism provides inputs to a dedicated theory of mind mechanism, or uh, TUM, which is basically a, a module. So he thinks that uh, this decoupling mechanism feeds into a theory of mind uh, module. And what would be the, is there an experimental support for this? Well, the basic idea that needs to be tested is that there is a common mechanism in pretend play and in meta-representational mind reading. And that pretend play is a vital stage on the road to mind reading. And this would be supported by the existence of disorders affecting both mind reading and pretend play. For instance, in 1985, Leslie, Uta Frith, and Simon Baron Cohen argue that autism fits this description and that it... It affects both mind reading and pretend play, but not necessarily other capacities. So they think that you had not only a single dissociation, but also a double dissociation. And it's well documented that autistic children fail to engage in, in pretend play. And it is indeed a, a diagnostic tool. And uh, autistic children, moreover, have problems with the pretend play and the false belief task. And uh, in the next video, you'll see what the belief task is.